over a thousand years before the birth of Christ, a young pharaoh died. His burial was carried out in a hurry, and his name would shortly be erased from the monuments he had built. All memory of his reign would soon be lost. He was to vanish from history for 3,000 years. His name was Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun was just eight years old when he became king. These were dark times. His father had been a heretic, defying the traditional gods. Temples lay in ruins. The empire was under threat. Now Egyptians looked to the new pharaoh to return their land to greatness. He would have a new name. Tutankhamun was given to him after becoming king. It means the living image of Amun, in honor of the greatest of Egypt's gods. This sent a clear message. Egypt's ancient religion and culture would be restored. Tutankhamun's reign promised to be a glorious new beginning. As pharaoh, Tutankhamun had to perform one vital task. He had to take a queen. Anke Sanamun was considered the perfect choice. She was his sister. An incestuous marriage would ensure that power remained within the family. It also suited Egypt's military leader, Ai, who effectively ran the country. He would have been keen to see that no other officials gained undue influence through marriage. To mark the dawn of a new era, Tutankhamun's government began the restoration of Egypt's great temples. But for the king, the most important new building work would be his tomb. First, a site had to be found in the Valley of the Kings. I himself may have selected it. He was probably familiar with the valley, having already started to build his own tomb here. It was essential for Tutankhamun's tomb to remain undisturbed if he was to have a successful passage into the afterlife. The plan was that beyond a concealed entrance, a tunnel would lead deep into the rock to a series of magnificent chambers, which would be filled with treasures for his final journey. Work on the tomb would be carried out in secrecy until the day of the pharaoh's death. For the young Tutankhamun, the need for a tomb must have seemed remote but it was to prove more urgent than either he or his queen could have imagined. As soon as Tutankhamun was old enough, his queen was expected to produce a child. The future of Egypt depended on it. Without an heir, the empire could be flung into chaos on the death of the king. Incestuous marriage between royals might have made political sense, but producing a healthy child from a union between sister and brother was fraught with risk. Tutankhamun's queen, Anke Sanamun, miscarried at least twice. But even dead babies were considered precious. They were of royal blood. Each was mummified for eventual burial with their father. For most of Tutankhamun's reign, the real power was wielded from behind the throne, 
by a military council run by the young king's advisor, Ai. But when Tutankhamun reached the age of 18, he would have claimed his inheritance, to rule Egypt as a divine pharaoh. The king's newfound power would not last long. In his 10th year on the throne, Tutankhamun died. Exactly why remains a mystery. Some believe he was murdered by his own advisors. Or perhaps he just had an accident. Examination of his body, using modern scientific techniques, showed a leg injury which could have been fatally infected. Tutankhamun was still a teenager. Tutankhamun's young widow, Ankesanamun, had produced no heir. So the former advisor, I, now came to the throne. To cement his power, he married Tutankhamun's widow. Probably another incestuous marriage. There is evidence that Ankesanamun was I's own granddaughter. Tutankhamun had died, but his tomb was unfinished. Now, a new site had to be found in a hurry. His body was probably placed in the tomb his chief advisor, I, had already built for himself. It was not designed for a king, but it could be made ready in time. Tutankhamun's coffin was placed inside a stone sarcophagus at the center of the burial chamber, to be surrounded by four gold-covered shrines, one within the next, each covered in sacred writings to protect the king on his journey. The small tomb was crammed with everything Tutankhamun would need in the afterlife. There were beds, chairs, couches, Musical instruments, magical charms, chariots, jewelry, swords, daggers, shields, torches, cosmetics, and boats to carry him on his long journey. Tutankhamun was not buried with the care one might expect for a king. The golden coffin was too big and part of it had to be sawn off to make way for the lid of the sarcophagus. Tutankhamun's final resting place was in a tomb built for a commoner and assembled in a rush. 